G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and this is a video tutorial on how to animate a walk cycle as viewed from the front. Now uh, I will also let you know that I'm separately animating the boobs for the female in this animation cycle. So if you'd like to watch a how to animate bouncing boobs tutorial, click on the annotation link provided. Anyways, getting to work. I have a very basic default little thing here. This is uh, my female um, run cycle construction work. Um, and I've just done four frames. So this is really simple. We've got the, up, the first frame of the run cycle facing front on. The second frame, which is the, me the middle pose, like when she hits the ground. Then the third frame is a duplicate of the first frame, but just flipped, reversed. And then the fourth frame is a duplicate of the second frame. So we have this bouncing, we have the very beginning construction work of this run cycle happening. Now I don't uh, necessarily really need to show you the creation of that because it's pretty straightforward. Um, just doing the front pose, arms in separate directions with the legs opposing that, and then duplicating and reversing that halfway along here. And then the middle frame is being duplicated just uh, the ground pose. I could probably bring that down a little bit more. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do the construction work and line work between these frames so we can start getting the motion happening. Now, if I open this up, we can see it animate there. In fact, I'll, I'll just, oh no, that didn't work. Anyways, I was gonna full screen. Anyways, yeah, let's get to it. <laughs> So what I like to do is to draw, um, instead of just going like chronologically through these frames, I like to draw the halfway point of each of them in the construction lines. And then I draw the halfway point of each of those. So I'm going to uh, speed up time so you can see how I draw those halfway points. Um, I'll do the first one in normal time and then the others will be sped up to keep your attention span healthy. So I'm gonna hit F7 between these frames here. So we can see on the left, uh, up here on the timeline, I have my original and on the right, I have the next one that I'm working towards. But in the middle is, it's completely blank. So I'm gonna turn on onion skin, that button right there, and I'm gonna drag it out so that one frame on each side is selected. Now, as you can see, it's quite dark, uh, quite light uh, with the construction lines I've selected. So what I might do instead is turn on onion skin outlines and we can see quite clearly, uh, much more clearly when we've got the light thing selected, where the previous and the next frame is. So what I do now is using my construction line color, just kind of draw the line between these. So the shoulders up here. Now the hand is making a motion upwards. and everything is drawn halfway. Now, not all animation is done exactly like this, but this is what we call an in-between frame, where they're not the key frames, they're not the key poses, but we're just making sure that the motion is maintained between the main frame and the next frame that you're working towards. <clears throat> okay, so now that I've got the basics done, can turn off that wireframe and just see how that motion looks. Okay, so I'm I'm fairly happy with that. I forgot to do the hair, so I'm just going to do the the hair now, so we can see that motion. There we go. Um, again, the key, keyboard shortcut to go uh, forwards and backwards in frames is the comma and full stop, or the uh, these things. I use that all the time, and it's a really good way to check the motion. And it's equivalent to essentially when animators traditionally animating flip the paper and they look at frames before and after. So I've done that first frame. I'm just gonna quickly speed up doing the other ones. Okay, so I've done that. Um, you might have noticed I did something a little strange at the end towards here. What I did was I copied the very first frame 
and I put it after the very last frame. And then I did the same sort of thing. I did the blank frame in between and that way I could animate the go between frame from the very last section back to the very first session section. So it loops. So I'm just going to uh, delete that duplicate of the first frame at the end there. <clears throat> so we've got these extra frames. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag these back so that they take up half of the space of the areas in which they were placed. So you've got this even distribution now and you can see that already the animation cycle is coming together much better. So I'm going to full screen this so you can see it starting to come about. So we've got the motion. Now what I, what I can do is I start refining how this looks by just kind of tweaking little bits and then uh, getting to the line work. So when I say refining the motion, in looking uh, at that render, I wanted to add a little more bounce. So I just kind of lower these middle frames. Yep. And I want to tweak it so that there's a little skew for when each arm goes up. For example, on this side, I want this side to skew up. So you can see if I I have my um, free transform tool selected, shortcut Q, and select the layer. If I go to an edge line, I can skew like this. And I just want to do it a little bit up for when that arm is up, and then a l even less up for the next frame just to kind of even that out a bit. And then the, the middle bit kind of slowly, and then that main frame skew the side up more. And then the end just up. Okay, so that way, what that would do is uh, essentially add a little more lift to each shoulder as the arm lifts. Okay, so I've done that. I'm ready now to add my line work. So I'm going to add a layer on top and lock these layers. And the first thing I do is do my very first line work outline. And after I do that, whoops, I took grabbed the frame. After I do that, I can base the rest of my line work off of that that one. So using a nice dark, oops, I think that's a bit too. I think I might zoom in a bit to have it more even line work. Okay, so I've done my very first outline line work bit. Um, as you can see, I've left out the boobs because I'm going to animate them in a separate video. So uh, you can check that out on my channel. Uh, reason being is because, frankly, they have a kind of a delayed and uh, more interesting motion compared to the body. And also because I wanted to make a tutorial solely about boobs. Yeah, anyways, <laughs> so I've done... I've done my first line work and as you could uh, see in that speed up, it's really straightforward. It's just going around the edges and picking a refined line path um, of around the uh, construction lines that we've built. So the rest of the process will be exactly the same, but we're going to be using the uh, onion skin here with one frame back so we can see the dark outline from the frame before just to make sure that our lines match up and that things don't get messy. Um, and the other thing I want to do is place this first line frame at the very end so that when we get to the last frame, we can make sure that our line work is kind of a halfway point. And then after we do this, we'll do the in-betweens of the line work and make sure everything is much more fluid.
that is done. So I'm going to uh, now delete this very end frame, which is a uh, copy of the very first frame. Um, so what I did was as I showed in the first example of the line work, I just kind of would take the frame, draw over the outlines of the construction lines in a solid form, and then following with the onion skin selected, showing the previous frame, I would draw the next frame. I also, around this middle point, duplicated the first frame and flipped it over and made adjustments. That way things could remain symmetrical and maintain proportions throughout the animation and then continued to draw the remainder of the frames. As you might have seen when I had the duplicate of the first frame back here at the very end, I made the new keyframe in one frame between them and I had the onion skin to show one frame on either side. That way it was a matter of just drawing the, the midpoint of those frames. So what we do now is we publish and we test the animation to see if it's got the motion. Now it's good to kind of distance yourself from it. I do it by doing weird squinting, tilting uh, of my head and sometimes actually distancing, distancing myself back. But you want to start, you want to notice mistakes and uh, fluctuations that shouldn't be there before you get to the in-betweens. So I'm fairly happy. We just kind of like look in different areas. There's a little misshapening of the head at times, which I'm going to go back and fix quickly. Otherwise, I'm pretty okay with how that has turned out. So I'm just going to go through these head frames. Okay, so around here it gets wider. So I'm just going to skew that in. And here it gets a little bit wider as well. Just skew that in. Well, what I was doing just then, skewing the head in, I'll show you as a more prominent example. If I select an area like this and then hold Control Shift and then bring in a corner, it perspectives that selection with the free transform tool. So that's how I pinched in the head. So I'll just test that once more. Make sure that the head is... Okay, so things are looking pretty good now. Now that that's done, I will no longer need the construction lines. So I'm just going to hide those, make them invisible. And now we're just going to do in-betweens. This is really simple. This is almost exactly what we've been doing before. So a lot of this animation work is repetitive. That's why I speed it up um, so that, you know, you can see the process, but without it taking the whole so far half hour, it's taken a lot less. Um, but I will show you how I do an in-between frame. I select the very end of the frame span of the first frame before it gets to the second. And I hit F7 to create a new keyframe and select my onion skin to show the frames before and after. Now you can see that it shows two body outlines. Now doing the in-between is as simple as coming in here and drawing the halfway point. So you want it to, the shapes that change, uh, you want the um, motions that happen to demonstrate within these frames. So you want everything to look fairly smooth and keep good transitioning. This angle of hands, it tends to be really difficult to draw and I, I don't like how they've turned out, but for, this, for the sake of this animation uh, tutorial, I'll put up with it. But uh, yeah, it's hard to draw them looking feminine, at least for me. I'm still a noob at drawing females. So again, you just find the in-between areas and make sure that the transition is smooth. There are some points where the lines are quite close together. You just kind of got to get it as in-between as you can. You don't want the lines too much thicker than the frames before or after. You want it to be about the same consistency. Um, and that's probably the key word in drawing in between frames is consistency. Uh, not going too out of whack. Um, I will be doing animation tutorials in future with more uh, interesting animations. So something less repetitious than a run cycle or a walk cycle, wherein we'll be able to look at um, actually key doing drawing key frames 
and animating in between to them. For instance, like a jump or a punch, something like that, where the motion and the keyframes and the in-betweens are much more interesting to work on. Um, there we go. So I've done my first in-between. Now, as you can see, there's going to be a lot to do. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more in-betweens to do. So I will speed up the process. Um, but you can see how that was done. It's really simple. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Finish the in-betweens just now. Um, what I'm going to be doing is just dragging each of these new in-betweens I drew back one single frame. And that way, each drawn frame has two frame, has a two frame duration. So we can see that immediately it's much smoother. I'm going to delete these two, uh, actually no, I'm going to keep those so that if you download the reference files you can have a look at them. But uh, what I want to do is add a little more bounce to it because it's feeling quite stale at the moment. So at the moment, it's just got a, s a stale sort of down, up, down, up motion. I want to give it a more immediate down. by dragging these frames down. It's, it's really hard. It's, it's very much about just kind of feeling your way through it. Um, I mean, I can kind of try and say what I'm doing as I do it, but a lot of it's just about, you know, making it happen yourself. Another uh, way to do it, is uh, I'll just undo those frame movements I added and have the original there, is I can take this here, go back to the main timeline and I'll add a new frame and I'll duplicate this symbol. And in this duplicate, I wanna make all of this a graphic, okay? So I'm gonna make a new layer turn that into a symbol, turn it into a graphic, hit OK. And now I had copied, uh, I didn't tell you when I did it, but I, I copied all those frames by selecting them all and hitting Control Alt C. Now we'll go inside this graphic and hit Control Alt V. So I've placed all of these into a graphic. Now I can delete that first layer and I find my mid frames and I can add my own motion add extra bounce. Now I should have accounted for this in the actual animation. Anyways, I'll add a classic tween and an ease out for all of these. And immediately the animation has a lot more bounce. So if I, sh wait, I'll go the full screen example. Now this technically isn't the way to do it if you want to do frame by frame animation, you should kind of learn how to, uh, you know, do it more organically. But here we have sort of a soft bounce run. And here I've added my extra bounce by uh, adding a tween to it. So we've got our soft run, our default, and our extra bounce. 
soft, extra bounce. So it's not a huge difference. Um, you know, the first one's just kind of like a light jog. The second one's a little more intense. Uh, if anything, I could probably speed it up a little bit uh, in terms of the frames in between them. In fact, just for to have that as an example, I'm going to create another duplicate. Delete these two reference frames and bring all of these back so that there's just the frame space of uh, a single frame for each frame. This is almost uh, as much for my curiosity as well. So <laughs> it might end up looking rubbish might end up looking all right. So I'll render that. Let's have a look, see how that turned out. So this is our default one. It's our extra bounce with a tween. And that's our fast one. So that could work in various scenarios. It looks a little stale because uh, the legs aren't moving very much. This is more of a, a situation where the camera would be focused on the mid. Um, if I was showing the, the whole leg, it'd be easier to show, but because we don't even have the knee, it's just more adding thickness. So there we go. That's our uh, run cycle tutorial. Uh, one more time, I'll, I'll bring this up just so you can see that. Now, uh, I'm going to be animating the uh, boobs bouncing in a separate video, so check that out. Um, like I said, reason being is it will add its own uh, aspect of weight and motion in itself and the fact that they're boobs and they deserve the time and attention that boobs need. Anyway, thank you for joining me. I hope you had uh, a, a good time and learnt something that you can use. Have a good day. I hope you enjoyed this video. Links are below to download the original files for reference. Remember, if you animate or draw something cool, be sure to share it on Newgrounds.com, the internet's best source for animations, games, art and music. Until next time, see you later.